Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to dive into a like really important topic in oral pathology that every dental student really needs to know inside and out, the mucoseal. So um, let's unpack what it is, how it develops, what it looks like, and of course how we treat it. All right, so first off, what exactly is a mucoseal? Well, it's actually a benign lesion, a fluid-filled swelling that um, results from the accumulation of mucus. Even though it's sometimes called a mucus retention cyst, it's important to understand that it's, it's not a true cyst in the strictest sense because uh, it doesn't have an epithelial lining. Instead, it's more of a pseudocyst that forms in the soft tissue, usually presenting as a dome-shaped, bluish, translucent swelling. Now, um, let's get into how these things actually form. Usually mucoceles, like, pop up because of trauma. Think habits like lip biting or cheek biting that can damage the minor salivary glands or their ducts. Even things like uh, accidental pinching of the lip or trauma during dental procedures, like say a white extraction, can block or rupture a salivary duct, leading to mucus escaping into the surrounding tissue. And when that happens, the body um, responds with granulation tissue that walls off the mucus, forming the characteristic swelling we see clinically. Clinically, mucoceles can vary a bit in presentation depending on their depth and location. Um, the superficial ones usually appear as small, raised, fluid-filled vesicles, ranging from like just a few millimeters up to a couple of centimeters. They often have that classic bluish hue because of the thin overlying mucosa and the presence of mucus just beneath it. Uh, the most common site is definitely the lower lip, probably because it's uh, so prone to trauma, but they can also show up on the buccal mucosa, the floor of the mouth, the palate, and even the tongue. And interestingly, there's no real gender predilection, so both males and females are affected equally, and there's no specific age group that's like completely spared, although it does tend to be more common in kids and young adults, probably because they're more likely to um, engage in habits that can cause trauma. When it comes to duration, mucoceles can be a bit unpredictable. Some might hang around for just a few days, while others can um, linger for weeks or even years. Most patients, though, usually report that the lesion's been, been around for a few weeks by the time they actually like, seek help. Now, from a histological point of view, which is super important for you to like understand, it's actually quite interesting. What you'll typically see is a cavity filled with mucin surrounded by granulation tissue. There's no epithelial lining, um, again, reinforcing that it's um, not a true cyst. Within this granulation tissue, you'll often find lots of foamy histiocytes or macrophages that are busy, like cleaning up the spilled mucus. The overlying epithelium tends to be thin and stretched, making it uh, pretty easy to rupture with even minimal trauma. Management-wise, mucoceles usually respond really well to conservative surgical removal. The key is to excise not only the lesion itself, but also, if possible, the adjacent minor salivary gland to prevent recurrence. And like, if the problem arises from an obstructed duct, removal of the affected glands acini is recommended to make sure it doesn't come back. And uh, before I forget, let's mention an interesting variant, the superficial mucoseal, which can sometimes show up on the soft palate, retromolar area, or the posterior buccal mucosa. These tend to present as single or multiple tense vesicles, usually between one and four millimeters in diameter. They can even be like associated with conditions like lichen planus, lichenoid drug reactions, or chronic graft versus host disease, which is something you'll definitely want to keep in mind. These lesions often rupture spontaneously, leaving behind a shallow, painful ulcer that uh, usually heals up within a few days. One last clinical pearl here, Sometimes mucoceles in the floor of the mouth can get pretty big, and when that happens, they're called ranulas. Ranulas can, uh, like, displace the tongue or even extend down into the neck in rare cases, so always um, be on the lookout for that, especially when you see a fluctuant swelling in the floor of the mouth. So, yeah, that's our quick but um, comprehensive look at mucoceles, what they are, how they form, what they look like, and how we manage them. Always remember to, like, consider trauma, Check the location and think histologically to differentiate mucoceles from other cystic or neoplastic lesions that might um, mimic them. Thanks for joining me for this deep dive. And if you found this helpful, 
Uh, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future sessions. I'll um, see you next time.